Hello and welcome to another Doctor Who figure review. Yes, today I'll be looking at the new B&M set, which is the 12th Doctor's Collector set containing Missy from Extremis. The 12th Doctor supposedly from Face of Raven, but let's say Hellbent because of the whole waistcoat thing. And then Bill Potts. Ah, a um, bit too soon. Um, let's, let's change that quickly. Ah, that's better. Uh, yes, so Bill from the pilot, um, which is quite an interesting figure because it is actually a repaint of a figure what we haven't actually seen yet. Um, even though the week I'm recording this, we've seen the actual photos now of the Amazon exclusive from Smile. Um, so the way this video is going to work is I'm going to show you the packaging. Um, I will do a comparison on the existing figures. I will compare Bill to a primeval figure because she's basically a kit bash figure where she's made up of all different figures. And I will compare different 12 Doctor variants and Missy variants and do articulation detail. All that kind of stuff what you expect from my normal figure review. So without further ado, let's look so at the So taking a look at the packaging for the 12 Doctor Collector's figure sets. We have again the scale of the figures there. And then we have the John Pertwee Paul McGann logo there with the nice sort of diamond uh, lines there. What we've grown to know and love with the Collector series. What the set includes there, 12 Doctor, Missy, Bill Pot, and again we have the nice clear window box of the insert being the cog and diamond motif which is rather nice we've got missy 12 doctor and bill there displayed rather nicely in this nice compact Inside of the box, box we have two of the figures displayed within this set the doctor Who logo again what the set includes and the 12 doctor collector at, figure set taking a look at the back we have this lovely space cosmos background which really does suit the 12 doctor you know i'd thought there'd be stars so i think that suits the 12 doctor down to the ground so we have the doctor Who logo there Prototype images of the figures, and, and again, the what the figures we are. have again the figures there, Doctor Who, 12th Doctor. Kicking figure. off this figure review, we'll be looking at Missy's articulation. So kicking off with the head, the head can move side to side. The arms can do a full 360 degree turn and are ball jointed. We also have a bicep, what can do a full 360 degree turn. We have ball jointed elbows. We do have 360 degree turn at the wrist, 360 at the waist, but is hindered a bit by the jacket. The legs do sort of kick out but are hindered by the skirt piece. They can move outwards. We do have thigh articulation and we do have bend at the knee but again it is hindered by the skirt. So before I go into detail this figure like I said was based from Extremis the series 10 episode so it's quite nice to have a, a series 10 version of Missy um, even though this is our fourth variant of Missy but then again what else can you give the 12th Doctor? Um, you know Clara's technically been done in the 11th Doctor set in the form of Oswin and Bill is obviously a very welcome addition and a new variant of the 12th Doctor um, so we're very limited with 12th Doctor stuff so this is our fourth version of Missy and I would have liked character to kind of have fixed the figure because the Missy figures are absolutely terrible for standing up you know you really have to try and get it to stand up it just doesn't want to stand up so that's one thing I would have liked character options to have done to refine and rework the figure. So taking a look at the head sculpt now, obviously this is based from Missy and Extremis and if you've seen Extremis you'll know that Missy isn't exactly smiling um, simply because she's about to be executed and I don't think if you're about to be executed you're not thinking about smiling, you're more solemn. Um, but obviously this is the only non-hatted version of Missy what we have um, so we've got to sort of suffer the manic grin and obviously the hair is incorrect because her hair was completely different in series 10 um, but the hair is done rather nice um, because obviously B&M are using obviously character options are using the best what they have um, to try and get a variant of Missy um, because we've seen four of them now uh, so the hair is done rather nice with all the different sort of brown and blacks to give it that texture and sort of sense of depth and that lifelike effect um, as you can see there it is done uh, rather nice um, the paint apps on the face, um, like every collector series figure, it does suffer from you know too much heavy paint apps where you really do lose the detail because I'm sure underneath this sculpt, you know, there is a cracking likeness to Michelle Gomez um, because somebody repainted the Jody doll, um, the recent adventure doll, and just repainted it. And you can see how good character options, you know, digital scan is of the actor. Um, but yeah, it's just let down by the paint apps really. Um, so the face, like I said, you, you can see a, a dimples there which is done rather nice. Uh, we do have an eye shadow there and this sort of manic grin um, which is quite sinister which I guess does fit Missy. Moving down to the costume now, um, this is the only other difference to the figure which is the shirt piece where character options have tried to give 
uh, the illusion of a cravat as you can see the detailing of one black line going that side and the other side to give the illusion of the two sides of the cravat and we've got a bit of detailing of her sort of stripy uh, shirt which I'm going to be honest from a distance it looks fine but it's one of those figures what looks better online than in person the other figures look fantastic in hand and the online pictures don't do it justice whereas this one's practically the opposite but yeah it's a nice um, way of trying to get a variant of Missy um, but yeah from a distance it, it looks fine um, the jacket is done rather nice we have this nice textured uh, trim it's basically if you've got a Missy figure you know exactly what the detail is so we've got this nice uh, trim detail going all along the lapels there and uh, you can see the seams of the jacket and the creases to give that lifelike effect and again the trim continues there and obviously on the uh, cuffs of the jacket and the buttons are painted there and her hands have been painted brown to give that illusion of gloves which is done rather nice it's done better than the talons of Wang Chiang fourth doctor because you can still see the third doctor rings on that figure Moving down to the skirt now, there's not much to say, you've just got some creases to give that lifelike effect. And then the shoes are done rather nice with the heels and the laces sculpted there. So doing a quick comparison with Missy so you can see what the figures are comprised of. So obviously we use the Series 8 head sculpt there, the Grinning Maniac head sculpt. And I did think that it was basically the Series 9 body, but having a closer look at it, you can see that it's a different type of purple. It's a bit of a bit of a darker purple it's more purple than violet um, so yeah you just turn to the back and um, you can see that this Missy is a little bit warped in the back as you can see uh, there's where she's been packaged into the actual set you can see where it's kind of warped um, the back of the figure um, but it's not too bad because obviously um, you display the figure like that but I think that because it's warped at the back that's why the figure's having a bit more problems standing up than usual um, but yeah Missy not much to say about it because obviously it's just a simple change of the neck and a bit of uh, different paint apps on the face and obviously the gloves. Um, but yeah, I would have liked to see character options just to try and improve the figure by obviously making her stand up a little bit better. Try and just improve that simply. But yeah, let's move on to the 12th Doctor. Moving on to the 12th Doctor figure now, so let's start off with articulation. So moving on to articulation, the head can move side to side. The arms are ball jointed and can do the full 360 we do degree have turn. bicep articulation what can do the full 360 degree turn bend at the elbow 360 at the wrist we do have waist articulation but it is very stiff and i don't really want to move the it. legs can kick out and move to the side but again are hindered by the jacket we do have thigh articulation and bend at the knee and of course we do have 360 degrees at the boot. So here we have the 12th Doctor in his lovely maroon velvet jacket um, which has been a variant of the 12th Doctor I've wanted for so long because it's just his Doctor you know in the the red velvet and the white shirt and the waistcoat oh yeah we don't have a waistcoat on this figure because this is probably gonna be our last 12th Doctor figure for a while I think that this is gonna be the last 12th Doctor we see um, which is an awful shame because obviously this could have been the definitive 12th Doctor but sadly it's missing that bit of that final finish in the form of a waistcoat. Now, this 12th Doctor is listed from Face of Raven, which is when the 12th Doctor's red jacket did first appear. But, um, obviously, we don't have the waistcoat, so you can't really class it as the 12th Doctor from Face of Raven. But you've got to be really pedantic and just go, you know what, this is a 12th Doctor from the end of Hellbent. So when he literally goes back inside the TARDIS and changes his clothes and literally the last thing you see of the 12th Doctor when he pulls the lever, you know, you don't see the waistcoat. So this is literally the 12th Doctor from Hellbent. That's the only excuse character options can use uh, for not giving the 12th Doctor a waistcoat, which is a bit of a shame because the amount of characters what character options have done will have waistcoats. Surely they can just simply adjust the sculpt and just put a waistcoat there just to make the 12th Doctor feel a bit more whole and complete. So kicking off with details, so if you have the Series 9 um, 12th Doctor figure then you'll basically know what head sculpt you're getting but the paint apps have been a lot more uh, refined. I will do a comparison uh, once I finish the detail for this figure um, but what they've done with the hair is they've given it a sort of a light grey base coat and then they've sort of given a darker grey wash over there to really highlight uh, the different hair strands or the different curls and etc. As you can see there they've done a, a really nice job um, with the hair on this figure. Now the paint apps of the face are a lot more thinner because you actually do get to see a bit more of the line um, and wrinkles of the 12th Doctor's face. And um, if I can just get it in the right light, you can just about make out the lines on his forehead. But again, 
it does suffer heavy paint taps but if you get it in the right light and in person you can see the lines on his forehead you can start to see some of the cragginess of Peter Capaldi's face you know just underneath his nose and you can see the sort of uh, jawline of a 12th Doctor which is rather nice if we can just zoom in a little bit closer you can just about faintly see those lines on his forehead which is done rather nice the paint apps on the face have done really nice I've seen a few uh, dodgy 12th Doctors but mine one seems to be pretty nice so moving down to nice. the costume now if you have the Series 8 white shirt Capaldi or any of the Series 8 12th Doctor figures You'll basically know what you're getting in the form of the body because it is a weird mishmash of a retooled um, Series 9 head on a Series 8 body because the Series 9 original head that had basically giraffe neck and it just wouldn't fit on this body. Um, so they have retooled the head which is nice. But the shirt is done rather nice so you can see all the different buttons sculpted there and the creases to give it that lifelike effect. And we do have the top button done up which is obviously the iconic thing for the 12th Doctor. Um, the jacket again is just a repaint of the original Crombie jacket but again the red velvet jacket was the same cut as the Crombie jacket seen in series 8 and 9 and series 10. Um, we do have pockets sculpted there and we do have some increasing details along there and again we do have the free button sculpted on the jacket which is done rather nice. Moving on to the jacket sleeves now we, again we do have that nice creasing detail and we do have a seam running down the jacket there. And we do have button sculpted there, which is a little bit wrong. They've missed a bit of red paint because what differentiates um, the 12th Doctor's jacket is he does have a little bit of a, a red button um, sculpted there. It should have a lighter red, you know, like what we saw on the Series 9 um, 12th Doctor figure. As you can see, we do have detailing with red button. So it would be nice to see that red button, uh, a sort of a different lighter red painted on there, just to give that sort of, to sort of differentiate to say that it is a different button. Uh, we do have his ring sculpted there but it isn't on the other side painted you can see it sculpted there on his hand but again they just haven't painted the other side just for cost cutting measures i guess and we do have detailing of his sleeve poking out of his jacket which is done rather nice moving down to the belt the belt is done rather nice with a nice paint up with a nice buckle sculpted there the trousers are this nice uh, light navy color uh, which is done rather nice again nice creasing detailing along the trousers, especially down to the bottom of the boots, which is just done uh, really nice. Now the boots um, are exactly the same as the Series 9 12th Doctor. Um, we do have a slight gloss um, on the boots. We do have the little tag of the boots hanging off there. And we do have detailing of his sleeve poking out of his jacket, which is done rather nice. Moving down to the belt, the belt is done rather nice with a nice paint up with a nice buckle sculpted there. The trousers are this nice uh, light navy colour. Uh, which is done rather nice again nice creasing detailing along the trousers especially down to the bottom of the boots which is just done uh, really nice now the boots um, are exactly the same as the series 9 12th doctor um, we do have a slight gloss um, on the boots we do have the little tag of the boots hanging off there of brogue detailing on the doc martens there and of course we do have the paneling detailing on the side and again the laces are sculpted on there which is rather nice and the soles are done rather nice we do have a sort of off um, brown colour um, to sort of differentiate the rubber sole of the shoe so here we have the army of 12th doctor figures so these are all the 12th doctor figures what have been released so we've got the original four series eight ones and we've got the 13 doctor set one there and the two series nine ones and you can see how the 12th doctor uh, sort of figure has evolved over the years so if we quickly uh, zoom in you can see the different paint apps on the B&M one and you can just see how striking uh, the new B&M one is because obviously the red velvet jacket really does help the figure pop and stand out uh, on the shelf compared to the other 12th Doctor figures. Now if you just zoom into the Series 9 12th Doctor figures you can really see how uh, well the sort of paint apps have improved on the new uh, red velvet 12th Doctor figure compared to the other ones so I much prefer uh, this red velvet 12th Doctor figure and you just really stand out compared to the other 12th Doctor figures what we have seen released over the course of about three years um, and I have to say that this Red Velvet 12th Doctor is probably my favourite 12th Doctor figure what they've released today it's just magnificent and you can see that they have reworked the head and obviously using the standard Series 8 body but we do have um, a slight different version of the trousers so the trousers have been repainted a different colour and obviously the boots are the classic clown feet 12th Doctor figures. You can see uh, they are different to the Series 8 one that is the Series 9 uh, shoes. But yes, 
a very welcome addition and is definitely my favourite 12 Doctor figure what has been so released. Moving on to the main attraction of this set and probably the main reason people are buying these sets is obviously because of Bill Potts. So without further ado, let's look at the articulation for Bill Potts. So the head can do a full 360 degree turn. The arms can do a full 360 degree turn. Also this, the other arm on mine just feels incredibly uh, rubbery and I just don't really want to move it because it just feels like it's going to snap off. We do have bicep articulation, what can do the full 360 degree turn. Bend at the elbow, but again, it is very rubbery and it just doesn't want to move. The waist can move side to side, but it's just hindered by the top. The legs can kick out and move to the side, but again, are hindered by the top of the trousers. Bend at the knee, and we do have 360 at the foot. So here we have Bill Potts from uh, the pilot when she first entered the Doctor's study. So yeah, this figure is a bit of an interesting one because it is essentially a repaint of a figure what we haven't seen released yet. So that's very interesting. Um, but uh, yeah, this figure is essentially a hybrid. And that word still sends a shiver down my spine, hybrid. Um, because it's essentially the Pearl Mackie head with sort of using bits from the primeval um, wave of figures character options did a while ago. So I will do a comparison of those because I do own... Uh, the primeval figures as well. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's look at the detail for Bill Pop. Coming off with detail now, so if we look at the face sculpt. Now the face sculpt is brilliant. They have really captured Pearl Mackie's likeness down to a T. That digital scanning of Pearl Mackie is absolutely excellent. It's just done really well. You can definitely tell that it is Pearl Mackie. I'm just incredibly impressed with the likeness uh, to Pearl Mackie within this figure. So if we look at the hair, the hair, again, you think the face sculpt is phenomenal, then you turn around to the back of the head and just the hair is utterly brilliant. It is just crazy how excellent character options have done with all the sort of different spiky bits of hair, you know, the sort of curliness of it. It's just done really well with sort of the different brown washes, you know, the lighter brown washes on the end of the hair to give it sort of that different texture and uh, depth. It's just done really well. I just have to congratulate character options on this because the hair it's just really phenomenal. They've really captured Pearl Mackie's afro, uh, which is utterly brilliant. I just really do like it. You can see the different hair strands there, just the little details there. It is just great. It is super. And of course, we do have a bow sculpted in there, which is painted rather nice. Obviously, there is a little paint problem there, but I can let it slide because obviously the hair and the, the face sculpt is utterly brilliant. So so moving down to the body, this is where the quality control kind of slips and lets it down because we do have, a, I do have a few marks um, on her torso there and obviously uh, the stripes of the uh, top haven't exactly been well executed um, that well but obviously if you put it from a distance it's absolutely fine um, but um, you know you can expect a few problems of quality control um, with obviously stripes and you know paint leaking onto the other sections of the stripes because it is such a small scale so you can't expect character options to absolutely nail this 100% but it is done rather nice with a different creasing on the shirt so if you move down to the back Again, we continue that creasing detail. It's a lot better on the back, which is a bit of a shame because obviously you're not gonna see that unless you display build like that, which is not advisable because obviously the paint app on the face and the face sculpt is just magnificent, but not too much to say on the actual torso, but it's done rather nice. I will say this, I am a little bit scared to move this arm because you can see there is a bit of a gap where you can see the joint compared to the other arm and the arms just feel incredibly rubbery. I feel like I'm just gonna break Bill just, just by moving her arm, it just feel very reluctant, the joints are very rubbery um, and that's a bit of a worry. Moving down to the jeans now, they have just done a magnificent job capturing that denim look, obviously with sort of the, the lighter blue section, that sort of dark blue base and then sort of a lighter blue to give that weathering a look. It's just done rather nice, you can see the sort of uh, fastenings of the trousers there which is done rather nice and sort of the buckles on the sort of uh, trousers there are just done really nice again. We do have that sort of blue wash to give that sort of weathered look. Again, we do have this nice creasing detail on the trousers, especially here. Um, but these are obviously the primeval legs. Um, but again, we do have that nice sort of uh, denim detailing there. And the shoes are where it gets a lot of interesting because obviously uh, Pill Mackey's uh, shoes weren't that high top converse. They were essentially just your normal trainers. Um, but because obviously this uses the Abbey Maitland figure, um, they've essentially just repainted the converse into the famous iconic um, Pill Mackey, uh, well, Bill Potts um, trainer um, colour scheme. But again, they serve the purpose, um, you know, done rather nice. We do have a little bit of weathering detail there, a bit of a brown wash to show that, you know, Bill's been wearing these shoes for a while. Uh, we do have the laces sculpted there, which obviously aren't accurate at all. 
Um, but yeah, done rather nice. Uh, we've got a bit of the mud splattered there. But yeah, what can you do with this? this is a bit of a, a mishmash of a thing. And I'm happy that counter options are doing these just to give us new figures. Um, but yeah, the detail is rather nice. I'm really impressed with the detail. So here we have Phil figure. next to her primeval counterpart, which essentially uses the same part. So this is basically the Abbey Maitland figure, the first Abbey Maitland figure that they released. As you can see, um, they have changed the top a little bit because obviously Bill has a different top. She doesn't have a t-shirt. Um, but you get the vague gist of what the figure is, you know, with sort of the different trousers and obviously the shoes, which I'll show you in a minute. But what now, because this Bill figure essentially is the Abbey Maitland figure, it would have been nice to see them do a bit more of an exciting variant for Bill, because obviously this is nice and everything, it's just a repaint of the small version, but it would have been nice to see Bill in the sort of jacket. Obviously, um, the only variant I can think of what they can do what is similar to this is how she appeared in Twice Upon a Time, as you can see there if the camera will focus, um, that sort of blue jacket what she wore, I think that would have been really nice, obviously. Um, the jacket seems the same sort of type of um, cut as the Abbey Maitland figure, so I would have liked to have seen that. So obviously, put the bill head on that body and give her the standard, you know, jean trousers, and sort of paint that jacket into the Twice Upon a Time uh, variant, just to make Bill have a bit more, make that figure pop a little bit more, and give us a bit more of an interesting variant. Because I think that would be quite nice to see Bill in that sort of look from Twice Upon a Time. Um, but if we move down to the shoes, this is where it gets very interesting because you can see. The shoes are based off the um, Series 2 Abbey figure. Honestly, I'm happy to see a Bill figure. Um, I'm one of those people who are quite happy to see character options use different figures to make a new figure because this isn't a new thing what character options have done. Uh, they've done it with Scarlione, the Roboman. Rory was basically a primeval figure. So at the end of the day, I'd rather have these bit of hybrid figures to give us a new figure instead of having no figures at all. So, and she goes extremely well with your 12th Doctor figure, it is so nice to have a bit of a Series 10 lineup for the 12th Doctor era. So yes, Bill is definitely a welcome addition to the collection. So what are my overall thoughts on the 12th Doctor collector set for 2018 from B&M? Well, I love it. It's a surprising set. Um, the only downside for me is the Missy figure. I would have liked character options to just fix the problems with the existing figure, so make her stand up a bit better because this figure just doesn't want to stand up, which is a real shame. Uh, the 12th Doctor, like I said, is probably my favourite 12th Doctor figure Carol Gropsons have ever done. Um, despite the inaccuracy with not having the waistcoat, it would have been nice to have the waistcoat just to say that that is the definitive 12th Doctor figure. But it is still nice nonetheless, and it's nice to have Bill. Bill is an excellent addition um, because I'm a huge fan of Bill. I, you know, Series 10 is one of my favourite series from the new series. It's just incredible. Um, so it's nice to have Series 10 represented on the shelf. And I'm very excited to get the next Bill variant from Smile. Um, so that'd be very exciting to have and you can expect a review on that Bill Potts figure. But yes, overall, I really like this set. Obviously, I would have liked the 12th Doctor to come with his trusty sonic screwdriver just to make the set feel more complete. And obviously the 12th Doctor give him a few more displaying options. But nonetheless, I really like this set and it is one of the best sets from this year. So without further ado, that concludes this review. I hope you have enjoyed it. And I'll see you on my next b &M review, which will be the last one in the series, which is the 1970 set containing the Brigadier, an Auton from Terror of the Autons, and of course, the fourth Doctor from the Talons of Wing Chiang. Yes. Um, so I'll see you in that video, and thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. So thank you very much, and goodbye.